Hi everyone. In this video, I'll talk about what makes a good demonstration for an imitation learning data set. Then I'll share how you can learn more about robotics through the Robotics Fundamentals Learning Path on the NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute website. When you train a model like Groot, it only learns as well as the examples you give it. So let's dig into what makes a demonstration data set truly effective. One important thing to remember is that while many tasks feel easy for humans, they can actually be quite challenging for robots. That means you really have to think carefully about what you are showing and what you are teaching with each demonstration. Let's start by looking at how a demonstration is made. Here in my environment, I've set up a leader arm and a follower arm. Whenever I move the leader, the follower copies those movements. As I go, the robot records the video feed and join positions, then saves those together into a data set. For example, I can grab the leader, move it around, pick up a pen, and place it into the holder. That's a complete demonstration. Notice that my environment is set up carefully for consistency. I have bundled the cables neatly and avoided leaving extra objects on the table. If you wanted the robot to learn how to handle extra objects, you'd want to include them. But in this case, I've kept things simple and tidy. Lighting is also important. I've placed a light above the workspace so my demonstrations are consistent. If you wanted your robot to adapt to variable lighting, you could deliberately randomize the light between recordings. Just be aware that this makes the model more robust, but also requires more demonstrations. Now let's compare a good demonstration to a bad one. A good demonstration is smooth, shows purposeful movement, and has a clear completion of the goals. One tip, make sure the robot starts moving as soon as recording begins. I like to give the arm a small movement between takes so it starts in motion when the recording starts, avoiding a dead spot at the beginning. You don't need to move fast, but you should move deliberately. For instance, pick up the pen, place it in the holder, and return the arm to rest. If you accidentally drop an object, go ahead and pick it back up. This actually helps the robot learn how to handle those cases. The key is to provide complete, not partial demonstrations. A bad demonstration, on the other hand, has jerky movements or long pauses before starting. If I only grab the end effector and stretch the arm outward, it gets stuck because I haven't guided the rest of the arm. Using both hands, one on the end effector and one on the elbow, lets me control the full arm smoothly, making the demonstration much better. Bad demos often stop short of the goal, or close the gripper too fast or too slow. Remember, however you close the gripper in your demos, Groot will learn that behavior exactly. Once you've gathered demonstrations and trained Groot, you'll want to check how well it learned using an open loop evaluation. Here's an example of a bad evaluation plot. The predictions are irregular and don't follow the ground truth closely. In practice, this model couldn't even pick up a pen properly. Now here's a better evaluation plot. The predictions align much more closely to the ground truth, and the trained robot is able to pick up pens and perform the task well. I hope you found this video helpful, and I encourage you to download Groot N1.5 and try it for yourself. You can follow along using the blog post in Jupyter Notebook linked below. And if you'd like to dive deeper into robotics, imitation learning, Isaac Sim or Isaac Lab, Definitely check out the Robotics Fundamentals Learning Path on the NVIDIA DLI website.